So what you're about to see is some awesome footage from a few days ago that we got to go on a field trip uh, to the Fit Farmer's House. It was really cool. We learned a lot of things. And if you'll stay tuned to the end, you'll understand why we went and what the biggest question was that we asked him. Also, just a quick update. We're working on a new transition for uploading. So it won't be on Fridays anymore. I know people were looking for a video probably Friday but we don't know what that day is. And me and Miranda are checking it out to see what day works best for us. And then also we may be making a transition with some of our goats, if not all of them. So right here, when I start my day, I just kind of go through and look at everything. And uh, right here we have some tomatoes that we have gotten seeds from. We started them from seed and I got these, we got these seeds, my wife and I, from Polyface Farm, from Joel and Teresa South. And this is an heirloom seed they were super excited about. And uh, this year I have constructed this raised bed to grow them in. So we're planning to save these seeds, uh, continue it on. So uh, it's really neat. I really enjoy growing heirloom varieties of different plants. We normally get a, a lot of our varieties from Baker Creek, but this is one that we've gotten from a family that has been passed down. So we, here we just have our drip tubing set up here to water our strawberries, our tomatoes. We had lettuce growing in here as well. And then we got some leeks growing on the outside. But, uh, this is our main greenhouse that uh, is right near our house. Really convenient for keeping an eye on, especially when it's cold outside. You don't have to go way out somewhere to check on things. We'll have our plant starts in here on our shelves. And we also have right now growing cucumbers over here that we have trellised up. So I'm a huge fan of uh, doing, doing the hard pruning methods on the tomatoes. And we're also doing it on the cucumbers this year. It just really helps with uh, keeping the plants healthier, encourage them to, pr to produce more fruit. So uh, I'm, I'm a huge fan of that. So Mike, what do you have behind us here, up here hanging on the top of your greenhouse? So these are tomahooks. We've ran a, a, a metal wire through our hoops here to be able to hold up our tomahooks here. And these hooks are adjustable for adjusting to the different height of the tomatoes or cucumbers that we're growing. And you can just wrap it to make it tighter or loosen it up if you need to make it looser for if the plant is just getting bigger and, and weighing it down more. I've, I've seen these done from a, uh, with a number of farmers in the past and uh, just trying to duplicate some of the success I've seen out there. And uh, this is one of those, those things. And uh, just to mention, is this, so this is your vertical way of getting more square footage in your greenhouse, correct? Exactly right. And keeping the plant healthier and being able to easily find where the fruit is. If these cucumbers were just on the ground not trellised up here it'd be a lot harder to work through the leaves to find the different fruit it also makes it easier to prune to prune the suckers and it's just so much easier like right over here i think some of these may even have some fruit on them over here but i can just easily spot them like right here we're just now starting to get some cucumbers going right here see how quick that was to find that fruit so much easier than if it's just growing on the ground what are these these are micro tom tomatoes i got these from uh, baker creek heirloom seeds and uh this plant it stays it stays small but they produce they produce like crazy see already they're producing at this height so this would be something that's great for somebody who can just grow on a, a patio or something like that you don't need a lot of space for these at, at all and the size that we see here, is that the size that it will be? Yeah, they'll be maybe a little bigger than that, but they're getting close to maturity. Okay. I'll bring the chickens into different areas in the garden and they'll help clean up, fertilize, and do a little bit of tillage at the same time. So with the systems that work together with the animals and with the earth and with the plants and, and just continuing to add and, and give to the soil, it's not, I, I don't look at it as what maximizing what we can get but also what we can give. So it's a synergistic relationship with, with everything here. And it's just more of permaculture, sustainable practices that we're, we're trying to implement and continue to improve on from year to year here. Okay, Mike. So there's one important question while I was here and why I came here. And that is what led you to the way that you're living right now? And what is the biggest impact and what drives you? That's a great question. And uh, I didn't grow up always into this lifestyle. Actually, I didn't grow anything at all until I was in my 20s. And uh, I really felt like it was a calling from God to, to go into this way of life, uh, to have a life more connected to the creation around me and, and a life more connected to my family and ultimately a more connected relationship with, with, with God that I serve. 
And uh, as we were making this, this transition to this way of life of me leaving the life that uh, I had before, always inside in the gym, I was a gym rat, just constantly in the gym. And that was, that was my life for a, a number of years of getting to the point where I love being at the gym to actually hating being there. I really felt that it was a calling and a drive to be out here in, con in connection with the, this natural world around me and being able to learn these lessons hands-on and have time to be able to observe the different patterns that are out here within the plants, within the animals, within the natural earth and how things work together in unison. And then that combined with learning things more about God's word helps me just to, to kind of it's, it's like a transformation and an awakening of, of just being able to see the just the mighty works that are out here and then to be able to identify my role within that on a daily basis that we're not to be disconnected and withdrawn living this box life where we're just watching box boxes and screens all day long yeah. but we're to be hands-on participating with this physical world and uh, there's so many lessons that are are here in it and, and and being able to do it on a daily basis is is really enriching and uh, it's really been a great benefit to my family it's allowed us to grow together I've been able to spend so much time with my family and it's one of those things as we were going through that it was like I was like I want a life that we can share together. Yeah. Not just I'd be spend a bulk of my energies and day away from my family and then they come home and get the leftovers of me, which is kind of like I'm just like yeah, drawn tired out, and... especially if you've been gone for like 12 hours a day or whatever it is. I didn't want that. I, I, I actually, as I was going through the examination process of that and seeing my bosses and, and or the trajectory of my life was at the time when I was working in the fitness industry, I was like, I don't want that to be me. No, that, that's what would I, be you. I, I don't want, yeah. I was like, that that, that would be me. When Who I'm you surround or, yourself is what you'll become. Exactly most right. Likely. Exactly right. Most likely. So thankfully I had a number of, of mentors and role models who I was able to learn from who, who, were, who also kind of walked in these steps and, and have been able to provide me with some wise counsel. Uh, Justin Rhodes is one of them and uh, I've been able to do that and it's been a huge blessing to mm -hmm. I feel like to be able to and like I said earlier it's a, it, I feel like it was a calling because I want to spend my days with my family I want to spend it out here together in creation and working out here and uh, it's been a, it's been a drive for us to, to do that every and, day uh, and I'm so glad that we could make it happen I know not everyone is able to make it happen. Maybe you can in different ways, but it's also, it's, it was a, a trying time to be able to cut the bills, cut the Netflix, cut the going out to be able to make it happen. Cause there was a lot of sacrifices that we had to go through to be able to live this kind of life. And uh, now are you well reaping the benefit? It. We totally are. We yeah. totally are. We're able to homeschool together. We're able to do life life school together kids out here learning and i'm able to actually my wife and i are able to pass on our values to our children yeah. and not have a system or somebody else instill their values on them and, and they have imprint. lots of knowledge when they're leaving you exactly right. leaving the nest they have lots of knowledge exactly right and one of the days i was i was just thinking about how how long or how much time my children have had to be able to spend with me yeah and my daughter is just 10 years old and already at her being 10 years old, she spent more time with me than 20 years of me living with my parents. So I was wow. able to, to surpass that time. And, and, and think about that, the time yeah. that you spent with your, your those close to you. So yeah. they're gonna know me better. Yeah. I'm gonna know them better. We've, we're in a society that's so just fragmented and divisive and it's just separating everybody and the families are hurting as a result of that. As y'all just seen, we got to visit Mike and Lacey from hey. the Fit Farmer this past week. And it was so nice being able to show up as strangers initially and then leave as, hopefully it's not a far reach to say friends, but they just showered us with hospitality and warmness. And it's something that I definitely want to replicate here is just offering up <laughs> what we have. And it can definitely make an impact on someone's life because it did on mine for sure. And the takeaway that I got was uh, being family first, and that was very important to them. And being able to uh, sacrifice and make that lifestyle change, mm -hmm. that's a very hard thing to do in life. And if we can learn from each other to do that and lean on each other, then, then we have community with that, and that's what we're trying to build. 
So we hope you liked the video and we will see y'all guys later.